Today's video is all about real estate numbers. We're going to look at the Bend, Oregon statistics from last month, October 2022. So let's go. Hi, Norris Bangler here with Rogue Real Estate. Thanks for joining me. I do these market updates every month so you can have a good idea of what's going on, what are prices doing, days on market, all those good statistics. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, that helps my channel grow, and then you'll always be updated on what's going on in Bend, Oregon. These are the October numbers. I know it's almost Thanksgiving right now, but it takes a while for the numbers to settle down and to become accurate. And just to remind you, I'm only using the City of Bend single family home statistics. So here we go. Median home price is typically what everybody wants to know, so let's just start with that. It dropped a little bit from September, and for October, the median home price was $710,000. So that is just up a little bit from a year ago. So we've lost some of the gains um, that we had over the year, and now we're, we're just about level with where we were last year at the same time. But just to give you some perspective, that 710,000 number is up 48% from 2019, which I mark as the pre-pandemic year. The pandemic years were just so crazy that it's, I think it's good to jump back a few years and look at 2019 compared with now, it's a little more realistic. How's our inventory of homes doing? Well, we're up about 20% from a year ago, so that's great. That means more choices for buyers. But we're still down 38% from our pre-pandemic numbers, and we're down a little bit from last month. But that is normal, our inventory levels are declining this time of year and our inventory does keep dropping until about January, February when our inventory will start going back up again. Our pending home sales are down about 40% year over year and they're down a little bit from last month as well. But like I said, that is normal for this time of year, nothing to get concerned about. And we're down about 36% from 2019 the year I'm marking as the pre-pandemic year. So yes, our sales have slowed down, our inventory is lower than in a typical year previous to the pandemic, and that's just because all the crazy things going on in the world right now. The interest rates are at a level that makes people a little uncomfortable. So I think a lot of people are just sitting on that fence, waiting until next year possibly to make a purchase. And I'm gonna to talk to you about why or why not waiting until next year is a good idea if you're thinking about buying a home. How many homes are we actually selling? Well, our sold numbers are down a little bit from September and we're down about 25% from last year. So the market definitely is sluggish. It is slowing down. And the number one reason for that is, well, you probably know it as well as I do. It's the mortgage interest rates. They have risen, they've almost doubled from in the mid threes up to 7% and higher recently, um, although they've dropped down again, so that's good. Um, but they were up over 7%, so that was just hard for people to swallow and they made everybody sort of panic and just stop what they were doing. How long is it taking to sell homes these days? If you're a seller, if you're wanting to sell your home or your home is listed right now, our days on market has gone up to about 29 as the median number. But that's pretty average. Actually, that's lower than the days on market were back in 2019 in October. So pre-pandemic number comparison was 39 days on the market. So actually, we're a little bit lower than that and days on market is expected to go up over the winter months and then it will slowly come down again in spring when the market becomes more active. There's a statistic called percent of original price. Now this tells you sort of what kind of a discount buyers are getting. So the median percent of original price right now or for October 
was 96%. It has not been that low since 2012. And of course, in the crash in 08 and that recovery period, yes, it was lower. It was like in the 80 percentile range. So people were getting huge discounts. But normally it's about 98, 99%. And in the crazy pandemic years, it went over 100% because people were bidding up the prices and paying over that list price. So right now, 96% means that buyers have a chance to negotiate with sellers on the price of the home. And lots of homes are selling for lower than their listed price. If you're thinking that because the interest rates are in the mid sixes right now, that that's a reason to not buy a home. Well, I'm gonna tell you, you are wrong. In my humble opinion, that is not um, the mentality you should have if you're thinking about buying a home. If you have some money saved and your income is steady, talk to a lender and get pre-qualified. And if you qualify for a certain budget, then shop within that budget. And here's why I think you should buy now rather than waiting until spring 23 when, hello, that's what everybody's gonna do. Everyone is thinking that. They're gonna wait and see what happens next year. It just doesn't really work out well if you try and time the market either for stocks or for homes. So stop looking back and stop looking ahead and thinking what might be and focus right now on what you have, what you can do. Here's some numbers. Maybe six to 12 months ago, there would have been a house listed for $500,000. It probably sold above that. So let's say it sells for 550. Maybe you could have gotten a four and a half percent loan back then. What would your monthly payment have been? If you put 20% down on that home, your payment would have been $2,429 a month, just your principal and interest on the loan. Okay, let's fast forward to today. So right now, homes are actually coming down in price. So let's say this home was listed for $500,000, but you get it for 450, but your interest rate is now six and a half percent. What do you think your payment is? Are you worried about paying six and a half percent interest on your mortgage? You shouldn't be. The payment would be $2,475, a mere 50 bucks a month more because Today, home sellers are willing to negotiate on price and most likely you are not going to have competition. So that is one thing, please remember, competition with other buyers makes home prices rise. That's what happened in the pandemic. So don't get caught in that position. If you buy now or early next year, less competition is going to be your friend. And here's one more thing ask the seller to put some money towards your interest rate buy down. And let's say you got them to put enough down to get your interest rate to five and a half percent. Now what is the payment on this home, fictitious home we're talking about? It's only $2,044 a month. You just saved $400 a month, okay? So sellers will help you buy down the interest rate. So please stop being afraid of interest rate numbers, the six, the seven, don't let that scare you. It's workable. If the payment works for your budget, which you only will know if you talk to a lender, then I think now is the better time to buy a home than waiting until next year, 2023, when everybody else and their brother, sister, uncle, grandmother, and grandfather are going to be trying to buy a home alongside you and competing and raising the prices again. Don't miss out on home ownership, which is great for building your family's wealth because if you're renting 100% of the money you pay for rent is like interest. I mean, it just, it doesn't even matter what interest rate you could get because you're paying all your money into a big giant hole and it is not doing anything for you. You're making your landlord rich instead of yourself. Keep in mind the average rent for a home in Bend is about $2,700. It can go as high as three, $4,000 for a regular single family home to rent. 
So if you can buy a home and have a payment of $2,500 or $3,000, which is better? If you don't plan on moving around a lot, if you plan to stay in Bend and be here for a while, buy a house. It is a better investment. It is an investment. Renting is not an investment. Um, it works if you're going to be on the move and you're not sure you're staying. But if you're pretty sure you're going to stay in Bend, buying is a better financial decision. That's my opinion. I know I sell homes for a living, but it's been my opinion my entire life. I've always been a homeowner since the first one I bought as a single person back in the day when I lived in Portland. So I highly recommend being a homeowner if you can make it work. So if you need help, contact me. All my contact is below. Nora Spangler with Rogue Real Estate. I would love to chat with you. No pressure. I am a no pressure salesperson. Um, you choose whoever you want to work with. If we're a good fit, then I would love to help you find a home and stop paying rent to your landlord.